Hello, my name's Tom and I've been messing about with making up some ambient presets for a uh, like sound toys rack and guitar rig and uh, my fractal axe effects too. So I thought I'd try applying some of the things I'd learned to just um, creating an effects chain in um, Reaper using just the stock plugins and the tools available. So I've got a bit of just playing guitar here. So I'll, I'll just play a bit of that just to see if it's a starting point. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just put a bit of um, compressor on it. So I'll just use a stock preset just to level it out a bit. Um, just use the acoustic guitar one. And then the next thing I'm going to do is, well, a quite common thing in a lot of the ambient presets is for it to pan wider as the volume increases. So to do that, I'll go to add, um, go to JS folder and volume. Um, and you've got a volume pan smoother. So this will move it to the left or right. So what I want to do is to automate this one. So I'm going to go to param here, effects parameter list, and then select pan here. So, okay, this comes up, it gives you different options. So you can link with MIDI or you can use another effects parameter. So when one moves, it moves the other one, or you can use an LFO. So that sends a, like a kind of pulse, like a low frequency oscillator. And you can use that to increase the intensity or the width for how much you do something. So it, it like sets up a wave to do it. But I'm going to use um, side chain. So this is going to use the volume to move this backwards and forwards. Right, so I'll just select the tracks here. And then I know I need to move this down a bit. And I'll move these a bit just to make it a bit slower going up and down and then play a bit of that. So what this should do when you play it is you'll see it moving up here and it will move the pan across. So I'll just play a little bit. Okay, so I'll move that down a little bit. Okay, so what so what I'm going to do is this is only moving it one way. So I'm going to move the other one. So I'm actually going to move this down a little bit as well because otherwise it'll start cancelling out the other one. So I'm going to copy this with the automation, paste, add in another one here. So this one here, I'm just going to do window float. I can see it here. I'm going to go here, show the parameter on this one as well. So just do it underneath each other. So one's to the left and one's to the right. So this one's positive. I put this one to negative. Um, okay, so we'll try this. I might need to adjust it a bit more. So this okay, so that seems about right. So I'll leave those open just so you can see what's happening there. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add some uh, reverb. So I'm going to go for rear verbate, this one here, and I'm just going to use a preset. So I'm going to go for wide, wide. So we'll, we'll try this. Actually, one thing I will do on the other ones is I'm just going to put the volume up a bit on these. I'll just go back to it. Right, so let's go to here 
and um, try this. Okay, so one thing you will notice with a lot of the free reverbs or reverbs people sort of enthusiasts make of not really expensive ones is that it, they can have a bit of a sort of metallic edge to them. So um, you can counter that to a certain extent just by doing a high pass here, moving it up. So I'll just try that, see if that helps. <laughs> Okay, so the other thing I'm going to do, which is quite a common thing, is um, having multi-tap delays. So you have multiple taps. So it's not a dedicated multi-tap delay in Reaper, but you can do multiple taps within the delay. So I'll just do that. Okay, I'm going to move it up to here. So it's just up between these. So you can see you can do multiple taps here. So what you want to do is have them proportional. So if you have four on one, and then you've got you can move them to sides here. So you could have four on the left, then you could do another one and do eight to the right, and then maybe do sixteen in the middle on the third one. But um, you've already got a preset in here, which is the basic five tap ping pong. So if we look at these, you've got one on the left, two. Um, on the right, third one so in between left, fourth one in between right, and then the fifth is on the centre. So, okay, we'll try this now. Okay, so that's getting a bit bit closer now to something interesting. So another thing which is quite a good one to do is to um, which thickens it up is to is to use a pitch shifter so that you reduce it slightly on one side and then slightly on the other. So I'll add that in now. So rear pitch. I'll put these in between here. So again, you've got add shifter, you can do a different one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do, say, three cents on one side. And then again, you move it on here, it doesn't tell you. So I'm going to do three cents to the left. And then I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to do minus three and do it to the right. OK, so we'll try that. <laughs> OK, so one thing you might find again when you do the pitch like that is it again, it can add a slightly sort of metallic -y element. So what I'm going to just do is add rear EQ in. Um, I'll just select the last one there. Um, and just take the end off a bit. But it just helps it a little bit. Actually, I'll move this up to after the pitch. So I think almost there now. So I'll play the whole thing through, see how that sounds. <laughs> OK, so now what you can do is you want to save it as an effects chain. You go to effects, save effects chain, and then the next time you open it up, 
you just do add effects chain and then this will show you all the ones which are already in there. So um, hopefully that's given you some ideas of things to try. Um, another thing I could try is um, doing an effects chain is maybe doing um, like a Wawa one. So you could automate a filter either by volume or with an LFO to do it like an auto Wawa. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. So yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers.